Welcome to another tech video you didn't know you needed. This is going to be sort of a mini review of the Lenovo Legion Pro 5i with Intel Core i9-13900HX and the NVIDIA RTX 4070. I'll be comparing it to my 2021 Legion 5 Pro with the AMD Ryzen 7 5800H with the NVIDIA RTX 3070. As usual, I'm going to explore some areas that I don't see covered by other YouTube videos. If you want all the nitty-gritty details and benchmarks, go check out Jared's Tech's videos. He does a great job on laptop reviews and are always worth your time to watch. But in this video, I'm going to try and point out all the significant differences between the two models to see how far things have advanced in the past two years. I'll be going over Mux Switch and Advanced Optimus to give you the information on which display mode is best for you. Finally, we'll take a quick look at how this laptop behaves on a 100 watt power delivery charger. I decided to go with Intel this time versus AMD because first, the RTX 4070 Zen 4 models aren't out yet, and second, because from my research, I believe the AMD Zen 4 Ryzen 9 7845HX, which is a 12 core, 24 thread part, though will be more power efficient at full gaming load than the Intel part, but it will lose in power efficiency at low loads. Gaming performance seems largely equivalent between these two CPUs. Since I bought this laptop for my son who is going off to college, the better power efficiency at the low load classroom scenario seems more important. So before we get started, I have something important we have to cover. Basically, I'm doing this video a second time. Uh, I had posted it for about 24 hours and then pulled it. Uh, thanks to a helpful YouTube commenter, uh, Fabian, he basically noticed that my 47 wasn't pulling more than 80 watts and it was kind of stuck at a low wattage. And also I noticed my uplift between my 3070 to the 4070 wasn't as high as I expected. Upon further investigation, um, there are a few cases where the Legion will actually not pull full power and be stuck like in a low power mode. Now you can be in performance mode, it'll have the red light and everything looks right, but it still won't pull all the power it should be pulling. There's a couple of causes for this. One is if you've been using USB-C PD charger, which I was for this video, and then you switch back to the full 300 watt charger, sometimes it won't flip back modes. And the way to solve this is to go into your BIOS, disable the battery, unplug your laptop, have it all shut down, down, hold on the back, uh, power button for about 15 seconds, plug it back in, and then power it up. And that's supposed to clear it. That didn't really do anything for me. What I had to do was a little bit more drastic. I basically had to do two things. First, I went into my device security settings, core isolation, and turn off memory integrity. That requires a reboot. And then after that, I used display driver uninstaller. I'll have a link in the description, but basically you have to reboot into safe mode, run DDU, do a clean and restart of the NVIDIA drivers, come back in, boot normally, then download the mobile NVIDIA drivers for the 4070 directly from NVIDIA site, install those, reboot, and then things seem to work just fine. To confirm this, all you have to do is run Firmark, so you can download that. I wouldn't run it too long just because it is very stressful on your system, but only like 10 seconds or so, and you can see that you'll be pulling a maximum of 140 watts board power. Now in gaming, you won't see that high, and we'll get to that later for some of the reasons, and Jaratech actually has a great video on he just posted about that. If you don't want to install GPU Zero or Hardware Info, you can actually use the built-in NVIDIA overlay from GeForce Experience. Just hit Alt-Z and then just set up the performance overlay to be advanced and then stick it wherever you want. And then Alt-R will bring it up in whatever game you're playing and it'll show you the total board GPU power draw. Here are the specs for the two laptops I'll be comparing with the new one on the left and the old one on the right. Both will be sending about 140 watts to the GPU so you'll know you'll get the maximum performance out of them. Now let's take a look at some of the physical differences between the two models. As you can see, they removed the glowing LED logo from the back, replaced it with a reflect reflective badging on the side, which I kind of like and looks more professional in my opinion. The keyboard remains largely the same. Also, they moved one of the USB-A ports from the back to the left side. Also, the headphone jack moved from the left to the right side. As you can see, you can uh, the hinge goes a lot further back on the new model. And the laptop's just a little bit lighter. Now I'm just going to run through all the BIOS screens for you. Mm -hmm. 
Remember to disable the battery in the BIOS before opening it up and doing any upgrades, which is what I'll do next. So the first thing I wanted to do was fill that extra NVMe M.2 slot with a crucial P5 Plus 2TB uh, SSD. It was only $120 when I purchased it. So the first thing you want to do is put the packaging material back in between the keyboard and the screen so that way you don't leave any imprints since you will be applying a little bit of pressure as you remove the 10 screws that are required to remove the back panel. Now just keep uh, just remember the position of those screws because the front ones are definitely shorter than the back ones. Next, you want to use a pick tool or a guitar pick to pry open just the corner of the laptop and then work your way around to pop all the clips. You might need to use a pry tool, a plastic pry tool, but it was fairly easy this time. Easier than 2021. You don't have to worry about the vents. It's kind of a straight shot all the way around and then the back just comes off. Once you get the back panel off, then you want to remove the three screws I circled in red that will remove the cover of the secondary M2 slot. The green circle denotes the screw that holds the M2 uh, drive in place. Please note that according to Jared, the right slot uh, where the boot drive is currently, um, you only can fit a single sided uh, SSD in there. It won't fit a double sided one. So if it's a thicker SSD, it's not going to fit. So just keep that in mind. I also like how both RAM slots are still upgradable. Here is some CPU-Z and GPU-Z data for those who are interested. These Gen 4 NVMe drives are quite speedy. The left side is the Samsung included 1TB drive and the right side is the crucial P5 Plus 2TB drive that I added. The 240Hz FreeSync G-Sync uh, screen upgrade is really nice compared to the 165Hz that we had in 2021. The only bloatware I found installed was the McAfee Life Safe, so I uninstalled it. I also found this Toby Experience thing in the startup apps, and I disabled that. But I looked it up, and it's basically for head tracking in some games that uses your webcam. I'll leave a link in the description to the video that describes more about what it is, but I haven't actually tested it. I also recommend disabling Microsoft Teams unless you actually use it. The Lenovo Vantage software has some nice upgrades, like the overnight battery charging mode, which is new. Also, the conservation mode now charges to 75 to 80% of capacity versus 55% in the 2021 model. So now we get into why I wanted to create this video in the first place. These new GPU and display modes really caught my eye, and I wanted to better understand what these different modes do. What is Advanced Optimus, and what kind of impact does it have on gaming? First, a little background information. Traditional and more budget gaming laptops usually work in what is called here hybrid mode. This means your display is always connected to the iGPU. If an application like a game requires the higher performance dedicated GPU, DGPU, then the rendering happens there and is passed through to the iGPU and onto your display. This has some resource overhead associated with that process, and I've heard it as much as a 10% hit. Higher end gaming laptops have what is called a MUX short for multiplexer switch. This is implemented at the motherboard where the internal display is wired to both the iGPU and the DGPU and through a BIOS toggle it can connect the display to either GPU. This is what Lenovo Vantage software DGPU mode is and requires a reboot when changing to and from this mode. When DGPU mode is on the iGPU is completely turned off and therefore you lose any battery savings you would have when doing non-graphic intensive tasks like web browsing. So while Vantage is set to hybrid mode, you will see display mode options in the NVIDIA control panel. Here you have three different options. Automatic. It creates a virtual display and then connects the DGPU to this virtual display on an as-needed basis. You actually hear the Windows chime like a new external monitor was plugged in when a game starts and it switches to DGPU. There's a bit of a pause freeze when this happens and takes a couple of seconds. Same thing happens when you quit the game and the monitor is detached. You can even see this virtual second monitor in the Windows display settings. Think of this as an on-demand virtual MUX. Optimus. This is the more traditional pass the DGPU rendered frames through the iGPU and then to the display. This is very seamless as no virtual display is created, but there is some loss of performance due to the overhead. And finally, the NVIDIA GPU only mode, like automatic but impermanent DGPU mode. 
the virtual MUX is switched to DGPU and stays there all the time. So Advanced Optimus gives you some very interesting options. In theory, giving you all the advantage of BIOS level MUX switching without the hassle of rebooting. I'll also be looking at hybrid auto mode a bit later when using a 100 watt power delivery charger. Another thing to take note is that G-Sync is only available in an auto and NVIDIA only GPU modes. In Optimus, it's only gonna give you free sync. To test all these different modes and what impact that has on gaming, I'm going to use Returnal in the built-in benchmark. I'm going to be using medium settings with RT set to medium, also at 1440p. The direct capture on the actual same laptop did affect the frame rate a little bit, so here are the final results for Hybrid Optimus without any background recording. And here are the results for all the other different modes I tested. And finally, for comparison, here's the Legion 5 Pro 2021 results. So here's a summary of the results. As you can see, using Optimus, you only take about a 2% hit. And automatic NVIDIA GPU only mode and DGPU mode should be all about the same. So really, there's no reason to use DGPU mode. Just leave it in hybrid and the Vantage software and then just choose the mode you want on the NVIDIA control panel. Personally, if you need all the performance, you don't mind the little pause and the connect disconnect, then automatic select is kind of the best of both worlds. You get the battery savings of the iGPU and you get all the performance out of your DGPU. But Optimus isn't bad either with only a 2% hit, at least in this one game. Um, yeah, it's very seamless and convenient. So. All the options are there for you. Also, I have to say the 35% uplift over the 37 is a pretty nice generational leap. So first, a quick explanation on why you're not seeing 140 watts being pulled by the GPU. 
Apparently, NVIDIA has added some performance limiters, this reliability voltage, and that triggers in most games, so you'll see it flip to yes, and that causes it not to pull a full 140 watts, it kind of pulls only up to about 100. Now, if certain applications, it doesn't trigger it, so like in Furmark, you can see and confirm that it will pull 140 watts, and that limit, that voltage limit, is not triggered. It says no. Here we're running Returnal on Epic settings, and you can see that reliability voltage limiter is getting hit, so you see it's set to yes. We're seeing the GPU only pulling about 94 watts max. And here in Destiny 2, we're capping out at around 83 watts. Here's the idle power draw with the iGPU on the left and the DGPU on the right. And what kind of a Rogan Tech video would this be without some Destiny 2? So we're going to use that to show the CPU and GPU temperatures running at 1600p native at high settings with motion blur and depth of field and chromatic aberration turned off. And now we'll be taking a detailed look at CPU and GPU, both in watts used and the temperatures. And I'll do the same for the 2021 model with the RTX 3070 and the 5800H. And now the numbers for Returnal on Epic settings. So as far as power usage, it's kind of a wash between the two models. I mean, the CPU is much more efficient on the AMD side than the Intel. The Intel is definitely more power hungry and hotter. But the 4070 is really power efficient and cool for the amount of performance you get out of it compared to the 3070, which is using all the power it can. Now let's see what kind of gaming performance you can expect while using a 100 watt power delivery charger. Typically, I would only use a 100 watts for just productivity and low graphical type of uh, tasks. But here we're going to just drop the quality settings down to the lowest possible and set DLSS to ultra performance to give it the best possible chance to run.
And it was pretty much a stuttery mess like I expected. Now let's test Destiny 2 at the same settings I was using before, which is 1600p high. Okay, now it's time to take. <laughs> now I got 24, 38. This is what I expected, and uh, yeah, it's 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 not doing well. It's it's, it's a stuttery mess. And then now it's it's smooth again, so it kind of comes and goes. Okay, it didn't take. I said no. Apply. All right, there we go. Okay, this is this is not half bad. At low, 50% rendering resolution, which looks a little blurry, but you know, still very playable. It's actually running quite well. I guess we got the power budget down low enough where it's not complete garbage. Okay, yeah, this is this is pretty impressive. This is definitely working better than the 2021 model as far as how it manages power. Um, if you can get your, your GPU utilization or power usage down low enough, this is actually quite reasonable when you're considering you're only using a 100 watt US, USB-C power delivery. After all that testing, we lost a couple of percent of battery, so it is discharging slightly it seems, but nothing too significant. Let's try this hybrid auto mode. It's going to force IGPU probably while we're on a 100 watt PD and see what that does. So it is obvious it's using the IGPU only and the 4070 is not being used at all. Here we're at low settings, 50% rendering, and we're only pulling uh, 50 watts, which is great. And our frame rate is 16 while in orbit. So I'm not even going to go try to play this game. Because, yeah, why would you play Destiny 2 on an iGPU, especially an Intel one? This is kind of pointless. And really, I guess if you're playing Hearthstone or something, I have no idea. I don't know what the use case is for this. If you're going to use 100 watts, I'd rather use the 4070. Pull the maximum 100 watts, get as much performance as you can. Just try to lower your settings so you can get closer to that 100 watt budget. And you'll have an okay gaming experience. But this is not it. One other thing that I didn't get to test is these custom performance settings that is new to the Lenovo Vantage software. Here you can really tweak in a granular level how much power is delivered to the CPU versus GPU. And I think with some tweaking here, depending on the game, you could probably get a lot more performance out of it uh, at 100 watts. As a side note, according to Jared, uh, apparently this USB-C PD can take up to 140 watts, but it's not a standard PD profile, so you're probably going to need some proprietary Lenovo power supply. Time to give Jedi Survivor a test. I try to keep spoilers out of all the footage. I'm going to play this on high with RT off and also FSR 2.0 on quality. It almost reminds me of the Jedi training grounds, but it feels different. Older.
What is this place? Huh? Nice job. Power's still running down here. Let's see if we can hit the lights. I'll be demonstrating the rather large performance uplift the 4070 has over the 3070 in Destiny 2 while I go over some final thoughts and conclusion. So first, gaming performance. The RTX 4070 is a pretty nice leap over the 3070, with about a 35-45% to performance improvement depending on workload, at least in the limited games I tested. Even more impressive is it does it at 40-50 to 50 watts less power. Too bad there are these weird voltage reliability limiters in place. 
I'm not sure why it's there, but it smells like an artificial limit to differentiate GPU product tiers because the 4080 and the 4090 do not have these limits. The 4070 has the same amount of VRAM at 8GB as the 3070, which could be more concerning as time goes on. Well, actually, it's already a bit concerning. But you do get access to AV1 and DLSS3 frame generation, which are nice. There are also all the other nice upgrades like a 13th gen Core i9 with 24 cores, which is a bit mind-blowing to think about, but it does come at the cost in power consumption and heat. Add to that the 240Hz screen, advanced Optimus, the overall improved power efficiency, at least with the GPU, these new systems have quite a bit to offer over just raw performance improvements. This completely maxed out Pro 5i costs less than $19.50 before tax. Throw in another $120 for the additional 2TB NVMe. After taxes, the total cost here in the States was $22.30, which isn't horrible considering the amount of machine you are getting. Having said that though, you can get some great deals on older Legion Pro laptops and could save you several hundred dollars without that much performance loss. If you don't have to have the latest and greatest, then yeah, going with an older model is not a bad choice. I have a few small nitpicks though. The new shell is a fingerprint magnet. Still not a fan of the 10 keypad. I'd rather not have it and just have everything centered. Touchpad palm rejection still isn't great and no Thunderbolt. Also, talk about having some early adopter pains like not getting full performance without tweaking and driver shenanigans. Overall though, I'm pretty happy with this laptop. It is easy to get into and upgrade and it's built well. My 2021 Legion has been the best laptop I've owned, so I expect a similar ownership experience with the 2023 model. It has all the key features that I care about. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If so, a like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated. Welcome to a bonus segment. Yes, this has nothing to do really with the laptop, but if you do do a lot of text or coding on a laptop, you might find these uh, shortcuts helpful. Set this up in Power Toys under Keyboard Shortcuts, and then basically I use this to help me navigate around or select text a lot easier since I find the home and page up, page down cluster really far away and hard to reach. So using these shortcuts and once you kind of get muscle memory around them, really saves a lot of time in my opinion. Give it a try and let me know what you think.